I wasn't planning on it, but it might be canic time, guys. The canic bug has me. I'm ready to try it. Canic Elite. They got different ones. TP9SF. This one I'm looking at. And then this one, look at the grip. It's got a safety that kind of goes up. So I don't know about that. Okay, so here's a Canic TP9 SF Elite with some kind of trigger block. <laughs> so you'd pull that down. So in this case, this is cocked and ready to go. Unusual. I'm glad I don't have that. I'm staying away from that one. I'm going with more of the traditional. There's the regular can. Nestled in with all these Glocks. 43s. Look at that. Yeah, baby. It's going to be cool. My man Daniel here at uh, Point Blank Range, back there hooking me up. Sweet! I think that's it. That's 560. Have you heard anything negative about these? I have not, man. I've heard nothing but positive things about it. They even give you a little gear set up. <laughs> that's funny. Stuff. A whole little assortment. Yeah, a whole little assortment of things. Yeah, that they give you. And then, make sure this is the right one. And then there's 3560. Yep. All right, let's do it, brother. Cool, man. Sweet. I'm glad you guys started carrying them. Yeah. Sweet. I'm getting ready to buy them all, baby. This is my training gun. So we've got uh, 20 rounders, 18 rounders, 15 rounders. That's how we do it. Bang. There you go, baby. Hey YouTube, JS here from the lands of the former Ottoman Empire, the Turkish Empire, and all that good stuff over in Asia Minor. Today we recognize it as modern day Turkey is my new pistol, Canic. In fact, I picked up the TP9 SF Elite. And I am so excited. Comes in a nice case. Little material. Disassembly card. Assembly card. I know it's different from a Glock. It kind of, instead of sliding all the way out, it goes forward an inch and then up. That's what they told me. Little registration card. Label, I picked this up. I paid full price for this. These are cheaper than Glocks. Uh, they're going to range anywhere from $359, $379, $399 to as high as $439. My loss is your gain. Yes, Oh dang. It comes with a can of holster. You have everything you need. This going bye bye.
trigger lock. Mechanic speed loader. Kind of cool. I was really impressed with this. I already knew this thing came with all this, but when I bought this last week, I uh, thought it was so cool that it came with this. Larger back strap. This one feels just fine. Spare Megcar Magazine. You guys have seen my video on my Walther PPS M2. I kind of talk about a little more detail than the average reviewer on the Megcar Magazines. Paddle attachment for the holster, quality control, brush, barrel patch rod, some fiber optic sights, an orange and a green, and then our back strap removal tool with some courtesy Turkish instructions. There we go. In a cool case. Let's zoom in. Let me check out the finish. There was two in the store. One had a more of a blemish in the Cerakote. This one looks pretty good. Almost perfect. There's a little rub mark there. I've seen that before, somebody else's. Let's just look. Not that it matters. Drop your gun, whatever. Pretty cool cuts and milling on this thing. Factory fresh, baby. Damn. Right on. Looks freaking good to me. Let's give it the inaugural pull test right here on video. Reset. Look how wet that thing is. Bam. <laughs> Comes lubed up from the factory pretty nice. All right, high capacity magazine. Along with 15 plus one high cap magazine, Glock style trigger, integrated Picatinny rail, adjustable back straps. Looks like there's two. Comes with the smaller and there's either, either this is medium and it comes with a large or this is small and it comes with a medium. However you want to refer to it, a little different from Glocks, we get all three of them there. TP9 SF Elite with our Warren sights. U-notch with our cool fiber optic. Most people like the red. I'll run it for a while until I put a set of excess big dots on there. You've got a ledge. That looks pretty good. Are these metal? Metal? Yeah, I think they're metal. So they're better than the cheap Glock ones, which are plastic. They do say worn on there. Smooth trigger pull with a shallow reset. So you can get on it and really get it going. Mechanics have a good reputation for a really nice trigger, especially the Elite. 
the one with the serrations on the front that kind of stuff comes with the two mags fantastic reviews online these things are really holding up the weight cost durability being created over in turkey they've got cheaper labor i think that allows them to bring the price down they're imported by century international arms canic is there's not a lot of information on them they come from the samsung no not samsung s-a-m-s-u-n domestic defense they're a uh, major turkish defense contractor over in Samson, Turkey. Basically, it's either a province or a city that's on the Black Sea. And Turkey's kind of interesting strategically. They are a NATO ally. Um, we don't, Europeans they, and the U.S., we quite don't know how to treat them, right? Knowing that Turkey is predominantly an is Islamic country, we know that they're in NATO. They are an ally of America, but we also know that we're not exactly making friends in the Islamic countries of the world. Turkey has 99% a population of, I think it's Sunni Muslims, but however, Turkey is not an Arabic country since they border the Mediterranean, you know, and these folks wear Western style clothing, there's a lot of European influences. You know, they do border Iran, Iraq, and Syria. And they do have problems on that side of the country from terrorism and things of that nature. What holds them together, in my opinion, and don't quote me if I get any of this wrong, is that Turkey's been a big military state since they founded their identity in the early 1900s. They have the fourth largest standing army. Consisting of four million Military personnel, we know they're battle-hardened and trained with lots of experience. And they do, if you look at a map, I'll splice one in, they actually control the entrance to the Black Sea. Canik is an interesting company. As I said earlier, you don't find a lot of information on them. If you do, it's in Turkish. But their website www.canic55.com. They don't really have an abundance of information on there. They do have four, five different brands of pistols. I do not know if we can get them all in the United States. And in a certain class, the TP9, they have five or six variants of that. All of those variants are nine millimeter. NATO round as standard. They do have one chambered in the 40 Smith & Wesson. So... TP40 V2, a TP9, TP9SA, TP9SF, well-reviewed on YouTube, TP9SFX, that kind of stuff. And as you can see, the latest here is a mid-size carryable polymer-framed one in the TP9SF Elite. The more I look at this Canic, the more it's growing on me. It does have an ambidextrous slide release. So we just push up to engage. You can see the notch. It's the same on this side as well. So we can just engage it from the back side. In terms of mag release, I don't know if that's ambidextrous or not, but it's coming for right-handed setup for sure. It's got really nice engraving. I mean, it, they got a lot to say, that's for sure. <laughs> I do like this, it's recessed. It almost looks like it's inked with black. There's a lot of writing. That used to annoy me, but it's becoming more and more popular these days. I think you just deal with it. Sentry Arm, Vermont. This side's the way we like it, a little more sparse. Looking good though. Man, this has a good feel. 
Okay, from a loaded bullet indicator status, I have a snap cap. You don't have a visual indicator like on the Walther. It's actually a raised piece here with a little red dot painted in on it. You can see it there. That is how Canik does it. And you can see the button on the back with a little red dot of paint protruding. Let's put her on the scale. Let's do unloaded weight with mag in. Twenty eight point one five ounces, one point seven six pounds. Let's hit a trigger pull. We'll do two of them. Five pounds or more like 4.98. Reset, do it one last time. That's pretty good. Under the 5.5 of the Glocks. I'm gonna try to do this one on the tip. Four point three pounds. Four point three point four point four. Pretty damn good. Nice. Okay, moving outdoors. We're going to compare the Canik TP9 SF Elite to one of the standards, the Glock 19. In this case, I'm going to leave the magazines in. Let's do frame against frame, kind of like that. Not grip. You see how the, the handles are contoured differently? So if we did frame against frame... That's what we're looking like. Thumbnail difference longer on the Canik. Side profile on that. Something like this. Length normally is not a problem. Especially when you're carrying. You, you would never know. Now, grip. Actually, let's do this one. Let's look at frame and slide. You can definitely see that that's probably about right. Canic is taller but contoured on the top. Pounded. Alright, we're at the range. Gonna hit some ammo. First time Dude. shooting the cannon. This might be the winner. Our targets in. We're gonna shoot three ammos. Got some Federal 115 grain. Got some Brazer Blast 115 grain. We've got some Herders 115 grain. And three targets. So I'm gonna shoot each one, one set for accuracy at each target. Yeah, baby. Dude, I'm excited to shoot this cannon. Up next, herders. Seven yards, center mass. This gun. Damn. Woo! Good gravy. This thing is on the Broke money. Broke the gun man. down. Gave it Sights a cleaning. Getting ready to take accurate. it to the range to give it a shot. I have no choice. I did a second look at the Canik holster that it comes through. All Apparently, right. this is version two. I want That's you it. to be a. Very I'm attentive a fan of and watch uh, this. 
can it. That's it. I'm gonna shoot the rest of this. It's in here, right? For pure enjoyment. You got tier two retention. Keeper. Kind of seems cool, but here's what I want you to notice. I'm a righty. Here's the crappy paddle. Say this is my right hand side, this is my torso, and it goes on my right. And I go down to draw. How do I draw this? Look, it's as if Canik screwed it up. Yes, it's the world's worst serpent style holster, but even the, the thing that you press is not on the right. It's actually hidden between your body, your hip, and the gun. You literally have to depress this to get this to come out. You understand? If I put this on my right hand side and this is here, I can't even draw the weapon. It won't even come out. And it doesn't appear to be friction based. I can't, I can't pull it out. Dude, there's no way I can use this. It's literally a design flaw because this is on the left versus the right. Unbelievable. So there you go. This is not subjective. The world's worst, worst holster. You better order one. Great gun, order a holster. I did verify that the holsters are actually, they're on version two of their holsters now. So all, if you have any of the other models or that were created earlier, they're running version one. Sentry Arms confirmed it in a, in a blog as well. Their holsters are just garbage now. It's, it's literally some type of left-handed holster that's not made for right-handed, that's it's just jacked up. So, you know, this is my Green Force Tactical Holster for the 19. I've already got one on order for my Canik. But you need to get these guys that I purchased. Look at the coating on these. So I think these are probably coming from somehow, I don't know, MetGuard Direct or a different order. They're coming with this slick finish. The original factories come with the original finish. So it's not gonna affect function, but this is an extra coating. And I can definitely feel it. Just by rubbing my finger here, it's like smooth, like it's oily. This is smooth, obviously, but you know, it's like a dull. Oh, dang. I actually looked like I knew what I was doing on that. Nice. We should put another 10 rounds, same ammo through the same target. Okay, here we go. Hopefully I don't do worse than the first time. Center mass. Seven yards. Fiber optic front sight. This thing's deadly accurate. Man, a sweet, great day, I love it. And we shot the center out. Man, this gun makes me look good, and I'm not good. <laughs> awesome. All right, folks, can't go wrong with the Canik. Durable, priced right, different, unique. If you've got everything under the sun, you want to add to your collection, get yourself one of these. I shot about 125 rounds yesterday. Fantastic. A lot of people don't know about it, but it's a great, great handgun. Go out and get you one.